Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord this Wednesday. Yes. Amen. 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 To lift up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes. Yes, he is. Amen. I'm so glad that we was able to make it one more time. You know, we take it for granted sometimes. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. And uh, it's a privilege and an honor to be able to come to the house of the Lord. It honors the king. Yeah. Amen. 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 So thankful for that. We'll go ahead and go to the word of the Lord real quick so I won't keep you standing. The book of John is just going to be one scripture. John 8. Very familiar scripture. 58. what this lesson is about to this evening. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. I am. Amen. You can't be seated. Praise the Lord. He is the I am. That is the topic of tonight's study, the big idea, as the book says, is I will call on the name of Jesus, recognizing that I am calling on the one God, the one true God of the Bible. Amen. He said, very, very, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Hallelujah. And with every lesson, there is a lesson connection. Amen. Let me get my little notes open here. And of course, there's an icebreaker. Has me asking, what is your favorite dream car? I'm sure you all have your favorite dream car. Yes, Whatever it may be. I would be fine with a good old Chevrolet square body with a 350 in it if I could work on it. Amen. The money I'll spend in gas is a, well, <laughs> amen. Right nowadays, one little old sensor or something goes wrong and it costs way more than that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Glad that my mother-in-law and father-in-law snuck in today to go right the last minute. Amen. Got me intimidated and nervous. <laughs> he could have come up here and preached him, you know. I don't know what you had going on. You might be tired. My elder, my Paul and I love my in-laws. Amen. Good, good, good people. Praise God. But the lesson connection tells a story about a man named Joe who looks in this picture like he got him a nice little red, shiny, bright Dodge. And he's rolling in his little old shiny red truck, uh, shiny red truck he's so happy about. And he's listening to the radio and he hears a commercial coming on about the show American Idol. And he thinks to himself, you know what? There ought not even be a show. There ought not even be putting people as idols and worshiping idols and having people sing so good and people worshiping them. That just ought not be so. <coughs> But as he continued on with his day, he went to the store and he came out and somebody put a little old dent and hit the side of his door. And he looks at it and he's like, oh, oh, I've got to do something about that. It just so happened that this was a Wednesday when he would have had church that evening. He said, you know what, I need to go ahead and get this took care of right now. And so he took it home and started trying to fix on it and he missed that Wednesday night service. Sunday coming up, he would have been in church, but he had a new boat that he wanted to put in the water. And he thought he'd be like Peter, and I go a fishing. Yeah. And then maybe the Lord would bless him with a multitude of fish, like he used to do Andrew, James, and John, and Peter. And so he goes, puts the boat in the water, and catches some fish, and he says, you know what? Who goes fishing and don't want to go home and clean that fish and eat it right away because he wants to have that fish as a fresh fry. So he gets home, and by then, he's going to miss Sunday morning service, and he 
misses that night service because he was so tired from all the tearing and the fishing and loading the boat and frying the fish and cleaning up and all that stuff. His recliner was kind of a pull on him. It was a temptation on him. And so he missed that, but later on in that night while he was snuggling in his recliner, he sees that commercial about American Idol. And he said, I'm just so glad that I don't got idols in my life. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Joe and his new pretty truck was hating on the American Idol fans, and he had idols in his life. But he just didn't see it. Kind of like the Jews in our scripture said in today that they had God right in front of him and they could not see him. Yeah. The first century Jews, they couldn't see God though he was standing right in front of them. Amen. They couldn't tell that he was the one true God that came manifest in the flesh. If you was to study out the book of John in chapter 8, the whole setting where it first starts out where they bring the woman that was caught in adultery and he sits the Ducks down, rocks in the sand, and he says, Whoever's without the first sin, cast that stone. Yeah. Later on, the same cats are come back and they're trying to talk with him and stuff, and he's trying to tell them who he really is. And they're calling him a blasphemer. And he's saying, No, no, no. I'm from God. You are of your father the devil. And guess what? The same one that was wanting that lady stone was taking stones to stone Jesus. God Almighty Himself. Amen. Jehovah is the great I am. Amen. In ancient days, the there was pagan gods and there was gods that was worshipped. We have the sun and the moon and, and the stars, and there was different gods that wasn't really the one true God. There was gods that was worshipped. And many people thought that these Jews who only worshipped one God, they was monotheistic, it wasn't polytheistic. They said, these guys must be atheists. They must not even believe in the gods because we believe in all these gods. Yeah. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. But Jesus was the Jehovah, the great I am. Yeah. I am means he is. Or he will be. Yes. Amen. We remember in the previous lessons about Moses sitting in the burning bush. And God speaks through him and he says, hey, you tell him that I am, that I am. Hallelujah. Who's going to believe me? Who, who, who can I say that sent you? tell him, I am sent you. Amen. God Almighty. Spoke to Moses out of that bush. Let's go to Exodus chapter 3. Verse 13 and 14. It says. And Moses said unto God. Behold when I come unto the children of Israel. And shall say unto them. The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me. What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses. I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The God that is not confined to space, the God is not confined to time, amen, speaks through a burning bush and gets Moses and he leads his people out of Israel. The same people that he laid out of Israel would come back years later to want to stone him and kill him. Yeah. Claiming to be who he really was. That's right, my, my. Jesus, Amen. Jesus, Jesus. I am can refer to God's self-existence or eternality. Amen. You know, our human reasoning, our human mindset, it's hard to believe that something is without even being created first or generated first. Right. Yeah. Amen. The automobiles that we talk about today, well the newer ones are a lot of them made out of aluminum. Well that aluminum came from something. That truck had to come from something. The, the, the parts that they get, the plastics, everything they get has to come from something. But God amen, always was. Yes, he was. God always is. Yes. God always will be. Yeah. The great I am. He 
was the I am when he spoke it all into existence. Right. He was the I am when Moses led the children out. Yeah. Amen. He was the I am when they was in the wilderness. Yeah. Right. Amen. He was the I am on the day of Pentecost. Right. And he is the I am in, in 2021. He is the I am. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. He still is. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Back to talking about creation. You know, God created the sun. He called it the greater light. He created the moon. He called it the lesser light. He created the earth. And he set everything just perfectly. Yes, he did. So that we could have what we have. Amen. So that earth could. He set it all just at the right time and right place. God did that. Yes, he did. But. People, mankind has taken what God does and they have made gods and idols out of it. They took the sun. They took the moon. They even tried to call Paul one of their gods that they would worship. Amen. The days of the week were named after pagan gods. Sunday. Moon day. Amen. Amen. It's, it's, it's true. You can study that out. Right. Amen. Mankind has taken things that God's created and just left God out of the picture and not worried about the I am and, the, and the who he could be in their life and they just worship the creature instead of the creator. Right. They worship the God that cannot hear and cannot see and cannot do nothing for him, for them right. before they worship the one true God. Living God. Amen. Trying not to hold us long. We're going to move right along in this lesson. God is everything we need. Yes, He is. Amen. He sees it all. He knows our past. He knows our present, what we're going through right now. And He knows the future. Amen. He saw Israel when they was slaves and they was burdened and he made a way and pulled them out. He knows what we need before we even ask. Matthew chapter 6. Brother Hall, if I would have remembered, I would have got you some scriptures so we could all read together. All right. Amen. Maybe next time. <laughs> Matthew 6, I'm going to read verse 7 and 8. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. Yeah. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. He knows what you need. He has what you need. Sometimes we get carried away with our prayers and we start talking about what we want instead of what we need when he has what we need. And we get carried away and we get impatient. God, I want you to do this. God, I want you to do that. Yeah. Instead of praying, God, I need this. But God, you know what I need and you know what's best. You know yes. the way that I take it. God, you do it. And how can I read this scripture without keeping on with 9 through 13? Where he teaches his disciples to pray. He yeah. said, In this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. If you don't know how to pray, if you don't know how to talk to God, well, you can use that as a recipe. You can use that as a guide. Yeah. First things first, always get down. I repent, say, God, forgive me, but God, I'm here to worship you. I'm here to give you the thanks. I'm here to lift your name up, God. Hallelujah. Hallowed be thy name, O oh God, your name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's worthy of all the praise and all the honor and the glory. And your will, God, to be done. Your kingdom. Too many times we get caught praying in our kingdom. Yeah. Amen. My kingdom don't need to exist. It needs to be God's kingdom in my life. Hallelujah. Because if I seek first his kingdom, everything else is going to fall into place. But if I get to seeking on my kingdom, amen, I'm going to go down a dead end road. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Don't you know he provides daily? Yes, he does. Amen. It's provision that he gives us daily. Hallelujah. But the bread, amen, the bread of life 
Man should not live by bread alone, but by everything that comes out of the mouth of God. This is the mouth of God in our life, church. Yes, sir. Amen. This is the word of God. This is the bread that we need daily. Here's a good one. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Yeah. How many know you can't be saved? You can't be forgiven if you don't forgive those who wronged you. That's right. Hallelujah. I've learned that. Yes, sir. Amen. I've learned to forgive and I've learned to pray for folks. Amen. That I've had to forgive. Yes, sir. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. If we can get in our minds that the I am, it's his kingdom. It's his power. It's his glory. Yeah. Amen. It's him that we seek. It's him, amen, that we adore. It's him that makes it all possible, makes it happen in our lives. Amen. Jesus identified himself as the I am. The first century Jews wasn't so convinced. There were some that thought he was the Messiah. Remember last week when we studied about the shepherds? Yeah. They knew he was the Messiah. They, had, they, they was convinced that this baby, this child, was the Messiah that come to take away the sins of the world. This Messiah that the Jews have been hoping for and praying for and studying and seeking and finding out. Where is he going to come? Yeah. Hallelujah. But there were others that just thought he was a good man. There was others that thought he was just a prophet. There was others that thought he was just some magician or some trickster that come to take away the, the, the religious views and the political views and political structure that they had going on at that time. Amen. Even the disciples that sometimes questioned, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the sea obey him? And there was times where the disciples, even Peter himself, was going against the will of God. And he said, get thee behind me, Satan. While he called Judas was his friend. But Judas was actually in the will of God. Amen. That's a whole preaching sermon right there. Being a friend of God is getting in his will and doing what he wants. Yes. Hallelujah. But when you go against his will... You become an enemy of God. Yes, sir. You become just a worker of iniquity, a worker under Satan's kingdom, going against his will. Amen. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord God. Hallelujah. Jesus, in this chapter 8 of John, he made mention several times about I am. Chapter 8, verse 12, he said, I am the light of the world. Verse 23, he said, I am from above. I am not of this world. And our scripture text, he said, before Abraham was, I am. Hallelujah. So Jesus is starting to become, amen, popular here. He's, he's starting to get people to follow him. There's people actually coming along and saying, you know what? This is the Messiah. This is the one we've long waited for. He got his following. People started following him. They wanted the signs and the wonders. They wanted to be a part of what God was doing. There was many that were sick and needed healed. They came to Jesus. There was many, amen, that their children needed touch in their body. And they came to Jesus. There was a woman that said, you know what? I've been battling the issue for long enough. I'm going to get on my hands and my knees and I'm going to crawl to him. And if I could just but touch the him. Of his garment. He'll do something for me. Hallelujah. But Jesus was accused. Of blasphemy. Amen. The religious leaders knew he claimed to be God. Amen. And if this scripture said. Him, when these men were before God. Almighty, the I am in the flesh, the Messiah, instead of considering what he could do for them, and instead of considering that what he was saying and what he was telling them might just be true, they didn't want to hear it. Hallelujah. They didn't want nothing to do with what was going on because it was messing up with their tradition. Yeah. My God, tradition. Tradition has a lot of folks lost. 
Tradition has a lot of folks thinking they're all right with God, but they're heading for a devil's hell. Yes, sir. Amen. Today, there's still people that can't even see past tradition to see God. Amen. Trying to pull them out of the mess that they're in. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. I'm saddened of the, the people, and I have family that they're okay. They pray in their house, and, 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 and they're okay. They're okay with God. they got a relationship with God, but they don't never go to the house of the Lord and praise Him. They don't ever fall down in an altar and repent of their sins and say, God, forgive me. I need you on a daily basis. Come on, man. Amen. Because God, they have been grown up in some tradition that has got them blind in seeing who God really is and what he's really trying to do. Yes, sir. In front of them. He called them children of the devil. And boy, that didn't make them mad. Huh. Like I said a while ago, they, the same ones that was getting ready to stone some woman for committing adultery, being caught in the very act, took some stones and was ready to kill the I Am, the God Almighty yeah. that was trying to come and help them and save them and be the God, the great I Am in their life. Amen. They couldn't handle the truth. The truth was right there in front of their eyes and they couldn't handle it. They didn't want it. They didn't want to see it. They wanted to just get it out the way so they continue on in what they was doing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Moving right along. Jesus is everything that we need. Yes, he is. Amen. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. You know, the first century Jews, they, the ones that didn't recognize him, he, he didn't meet their expectations. He, he didn't meet what they thought he was going to come and be. So that was another reason that they would say, no, nah, you're just a blasphemer. You're not God Almighty. Who are you to call us sons of the devil? Our father is Abraham. He said, no, no. If your father was Abraham, you would receive it. But your father is the devil. Yeah. And you just like it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What's our expectation of God tonight, church? What is He to us? Amen. The world looks to drugs, to pills, to alcohol, to pornography. Amen. You name it, they're looking to it. They're looking everywhere but to the church. They're looking everywhere. But to the preacher. They're looking everywhere but to the word of God. They're looking everywhere but to the great I am. Yes, sir. He's the answer. Right. Amen. He is the answer. Yes, Amen. Too many times with that stubbornness and pride getting our way. Anybody know some stubborn folk? <laughs> <laughs> but you know we can be stubborn in a good way. Amen. Huh? Hey, I'm going to church. Hey, I'm going to go pray. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to put this old stinking flesh down. Yeah. I'm going to be stubborn enough where I ain't going to let my carnality get the best of me. Because yeah. when the carnality gets the best of me, I don't act right. I don't talk right. I don't do nothing right. But when I can get a hold of myself and say, you know what? You're going to go pray. You know what? You're going to fast as much as I hate to. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know what? You're going to put the old boy down. Yeah. Hey, man, we can be stubborn in a good way. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's just some things that we're just going to not come off of. There's some, some things in the Word of God that we're just not going to come off of. We're going to be stubborn enough. You know what? I'm going to do it because it's in the Word of God. Yes, I'm going to do it because my pastor preaches it. Come on, I'm going to do it because that's what I want to do. I want to be saved. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, man, we can be stubborn for God. Yeah. That's good. Get back to this lesson. You <laughs> should have put that in that book, boy. That would be good, boy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Stubbornness and pride will get in the way. Yes, it will. Amen. Every time. Pride is what make young people back up a few rows and not come and worship God when it comes time to go to church. Yeah. Amen. Pride is what will sit us on a pew instead of making our way down to an altar and getting our hearts right, getting our minds right, getting yeah. our spirit right. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise 
Amen. Pride be like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that because I'm worried about what somebody's going to say. Hey, I'm worried about what somebody's going to say. When it's all said and done, I'm worried about whether he's going to say, well done, that yeah. really faithful servant, enter in the joys of the Lord. I'm worried that he's going to say, Ooh, depart from me, you work with me, but I don't know you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm worried to death he's going to say something. Come on. Uh -uh. No, ma'am, and no, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to hear him say, well done. Well done. Now good, now faithful servant. I can't never even quote that without saying, hey, it's going to be because I've tried to do it. You ever go to a to to, to, to a, a restaurant and you get upset or you lose your Holy Ghost because you your waiter ain't doing serving like they're supposed to? Imagine how God feels when you ain't serving like you're supposed to. Huh? Let me preach on a little bit. Come on, man. Imagine how God feels when you ain't being as good as you're supposed to be. We apostolic. We children of God. We're supposed to have the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to be the good ones. Yeah. We're supposed to be the one acting good and acting right when we go in public to be a light that shines for yeah. a walking dying world. Come on, now. We're supposed to be the walking epistles read of men. Right. Some of us are going to be the only Bible that anybody even reads or even sees. Right. Right. they got to see God in us. They can't see old carnal George Watson because yeah. they ain't going to make it nowhere. But if they can somehow see Jesus through me yeah. and in me, Hallelujah. I want to make a difference in somebody's life. Yes, and I got to start right here making a difference in my life. Yeah. God. Hallelujah. I want to hear him say, well done. So I've got to work at it. I've got to be a faithful servant. Not only faithful in serving him, but faithful to the house of God, faithful to the things of God, faithful to the word of God. Hallelujah. There is only one I am. Though many gods are in this world, there's only one I am. Only one. Amen. You remember when the children of Israel, Moses, had went up to talk to the Lord about the law. And they got tired of waiting on them to come back. So you know what? We need a God. We ain't heard from God, so we make our own God. Yeah. Amen. Let me say that again. We ain't heard from God in a while like we want to hear from Him like we want. We haven't got what we want from God. So we're going to make a God. We're going to make a God that's going to do how we want. Oh, come on. We're going to make a God that listens to what we say. Yeah. We got to get a God that we don't have to hear Him because He can't talk. Bless Him, Lord. Good. Amen. Amen. So they said, you know what? They talked over, they conned over Aaron into making them a calf. They took all the jewelry and let them boil it down and grind it down or whatever they did to it and made a calf. You know God wasn't pleased with that. He said, Moses, get on back down. Them people done gone crazy. Them people done gone and, and they looking to another God. Don't you know that the Lord, He's a jealous God. Yes. That's scripture. He said, ah, don't you be making no other gods because I, the Lord, am a jealous God. Right. Amen. Amen. Christians today, just like old Joe and his little old red truck and his old Skeeter bass boat. Okay. Amen. We are in denial sometimes about our idols. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And that's just pure carnality sometimes. We can convince ourselves that, you know, hey, maybe, 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 maybe every question once in a while. Could this be something that's hindering me? Could this be something that's hindering my walk with God? Come on now. Amen. Oh. Prayer life will get you to question things like that. Right. Prayer will guide you and direct you and help you. Amen. Don't you know prayer will help you? Amen. If you pray more, amen, your carnality will slip away and your spiritual man will try to do things in your life. Yeah. Amen. It's easy to lack on your prayer and get caught up in the things of the world and get caught up in worldliness and caught up in your own self kingdom. Amen. Amen. The more you pray, the more you want to pray. Yeah. The less you pray, the less you're going to want to pray. That's right. Amen. That's Amen. Amen. There's only one God. Amen. 
Amen. Now believe us, there is one God you do well. Even the devils believe and they tremble. Hallelujah. Amen. He's not going to share his praise with nobody else. Amen. He doesn't like getting put on the shelf either. He don't like being despair tired. Yeah. Amen. 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 He don't like getting dusty. Amen. You know, sometimes as Christians, we get to a point to where sometimes we won't call on the God as much as we need until something starts happening. Yeah. We don't pray as much as we need until there's some financial situations coming up. Then we want to go to God hardcore. Yeah. You know? That's true. Or something going on in our family, something going on with our baby, something going on with our parents. Then we want to seek God real good then. Amen. But God said, I want you to seek me all the time. All the time. Yeah. Don't you know if you seek me all the time, hallelujah, it's going to be a whole lot better. Amen. Jehovah manifested himself in the flesh as Jesus. Yes, Amen. We worship God in spirit and in truth. Jesus told that lady at the, at the well, he said, I will come from now as with the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth with the Father seeking such to worship him. Yeah. Amen. He come to this place tonight seeking us to worship him. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It helps when you know the identity of Christ and who he is. Yeah. Us as children of God, we ought to know who he is. Yes, sir. Amen. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. Amen. He is the God of glory, the King of kings, and the Lord of glory. Right. Hallelujah. He is the one God. Yes. Amen. Everything, all the God, the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him. You see, the Trinity separates that. Amen. But we don't believe in the Trinity. Right. I didn't know there was a Trinity until I started going to church. Yeah. Amen. I got the Holy Ghost going to Coverville Church and and the preacher was preaching against the Trinity. I'm like, what in the world is the Trinity? <laughs> Amen. I think I had a revelation as a kid. I always thought Jesus was God. And that was God's name was Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And little did I know later on in life, I grew up and got to the church. And, Whoa, God's name is Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus is God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. <laughs> ain't three people. Ain't, ain't a, a father and a son. And an and a old dude with a, a beard that's white. And his son's got brown hair and, and all this. <laughs> Mess the world tries to make you think. Yeah. yeah. Tradition. Did I say anything about tradition yeah. earlier? Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. John 1 and 14 says that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And this scripture also was in the last lesson that we great is the mystery of God. It's that God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, sitting of angels, preaching to the Gentiles, believed on the world, received up in the glory. All that was God, but Jesus is the one who did all of that. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Praise God. I'm so glad I know him in the oneness. Yeah. I'm so glad I know him, hallelujah, for who he is, the great I am. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The name of Jesus means Jehovah Savior. I'm going to turn to Isaiah real quick if I can. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Hallelujah. Jesus saved. Hallelujah. Yes. He has become my Jehovah Savior. He saves from sin. He saves from sickness. He saves from addiction. Yeah. He saves from misunderstanding. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Those that believe in that Trinity, they ain't some that don't believe in it no more. They believe because they got an understanding and a revelation of who God is. Yeah. Amen. Those that used to live in sin, amen, was delivered from the sin. Yeah. Those that were sick, was healed, amen, and touched by the great I am. Yeah. And those like myself that was addicted, amen, to things, 
Hallelujah. Was set free. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And I'm not like this old traditional uh, recovery system that they got going on right now where they take people that's been recovered and been delivered and said, oh, you're in recovery still. No, praise God. When I got the Holy Ghost, I got delivered. Yeah. When I fell in an altar of repentance, God healed me. He took all that marijuana and them pills and that drinking out of my life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. I'm not a recovering alcoholic. I'm not a recovering drugger, but I'm a delivered, born again, yeah. child of God. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm a new preacher in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. He is a healer. He's your healer. Yes, he He's my healer. Yes, he is. was the Jews' healer. He was the Samaritans' healer. He was the Gentiles' Amen. healer. Yes, you are. He was the deliverer. He was to all them, and he is to you and I, the I am. Amen. Amen. Now, when we call on Jesus, we call on the one God of the Bible. Yes. Yes. Amen. We can't have a close relationship with the God of the universe. Yes. Amen. The omnipresent God that's everywhere at all times. Amen. We can have a personal relationship just as close as the mention of his yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. When we pray in Jesus' name, Amen. When we baptize in Jesus' name, when we rejoice in the miracles, the signs, and the wonders that Jesus done, when we do everything in word and deed, we do it all in the name of Jesus. We are doing it in the name of the great I am. We are doing it in the mighty God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now there's hope. I'm getting ready to close this lesson out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The lesson started with a story of a man who was driving his little pretty truck in his, in his car in denial about the idols that he had. And I'll just go ahead and say it. Not everybody's going to have the same things that could be idols in their life. Everybody knows, well, you know what an idol is. Anything you put before God. How much did you put before God? Think about it. I'm not pointing the fingers or trying to trying to say anything. Anybody even does that, but I know that I'm a human being. Yeah. Amen. And it's easy if I'm not praying and doing like I'm supposed to, yeah. that I can put something as an idol in front of God. Oh, That's right. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus. But we close with another man driving in his car. He's going to work early in the morning while it's still dark. He's driving, and he's looking up ahead. He's headed to work, and he's, he's, he's got to make it there in time. He's just kind of, you know, he's looking, and he sees something up ahead. And it gets closer and closer, and by the time he gets right up on it, it's a big old cow right in the middle of the road. Amen. So what he does, he closes his eyes because he knows it's already too late. He's fixing to have a bad impact. He closes his eyes and he says, Jesus! Uh, Lord, yeah. Amen. Amen. And he waits. And he opens his eyes and he's still going down the road. And he kind of pulls over and he gets out and looks back. Wow. Wow. And he starts to question, you know what? Is a one word prayer able to save me and what just happened just by calling on Jesus? Yes. But he said, why not today since he just done this for me? Amen. Why don't I start a prayer life? Amen. Why don't I start praying more? Amen. Because I'm thankful for what he just done. Yes. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> it builds our faith, church, to know when God does something. <coughs> when He comes through right in the nick of time. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's when it ought to hit us the most and be like, you know what? I ought to pray all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Some folks, I don't know if they still do the publishers clearing house, and I don't even know what you gotta do to get the get the money to come up to your front door. But whatever it is, 
they doing it. People scratching lotto tickets every day, going in debt, going to the casino because they think they're going to get something good out of it. Yeah. Amen. How much the more is God's church getting something good every time we come to God in prayer? Yes. Amen. Just because he don't do something right away, miraculous in your life, doesn't mean stop praying. Just because he ain't saved that lost loved one yet does not mean to stop praying. Right. Amen. Just because it ain't going your way right now, hallelujah, does not mean to stop praying. It means start praying. Yeah. It means get that prayer life of going. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. Feel a little prayer will turn and know a little fire is burning. Yeah. And it's going to be more than just a little talk. Amen. A little talk is good. But a whole lot of talking, amen, to Jesus is going to help you out in your yes. life. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. That young man or that man that was on the way to work that day, he said, you know what? Today I'm starting a new life. I'm fixing to start praying. Amen. Like my life depends on yeah. it. Hallelujah. Yeah. In church, we ought to start praying like our souls depend on it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Daniel got thrown in the lion's den. He might not have had time to pray, but he was going three times a day. He was going and praying. Even when they said, no, you don't need to be praying, he went and prayed anyway. Hallelujah. Yeah. And when he got thrown in the lion's den, he might not have had nothing time to say, but oh, God. Yeah. Hallelujah. But God came through in his situation. Yes. Those three Hebrew boys that was thrown in the fire, they might not have had time to make some long, drawn-out prayer, but they was living for God. And when it came time to, for their test, they said, oh, we're not careful to answer you, O king. In other words, hey, I don't worry about what you got going on, Mr. King. If you want to throw me in the fire, you throw me in the fire. But it don't matter what, I'm going to pray to my God. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm not going to dance to the idols of this world. Yeah. I'm not going to dance to the idols and the kings of this world. But I'm going to worship the only one true king. Yeah. I'm going to make my, house, my way to the house of the Lord. And I'm going to worship my God, the one and only true God, the only great I am. Hallelujah. Pray always. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks unto God. For that is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and me. Hallelujah. Amen. Sit down and start singing. Play it. Almighty God, yeah. Jesus, the Prince of Peace.